today is magnificent glorious day the galaxy of intellectuals honorable guest office bearers of the chamber and dignitaries on the dais and off the dais we have gathered here for the session urban air quality management and especially highlighting the indigenous and innovative technologies in urban air quality management it is a very serious concern throughout the world in both developed and developing nation swelling urban population and increased volume of motorized traffic in cities have resulted in severe air pollution affecting the surrounding environment and human health we often hear about even industrial solvent vocs which are toxic to human health more details of the subject will be shared by our chairman after some time now i request chamber president mr ashish gujarati to give his welcome address good evening everybody esteemed guest from singapore and our today's keynote speaker professor yu lia e associate professor department of civil environmental engineer national university of singapore uh, uh, she is joined this online professor Muk uh, mukesh khare prof civil engineering department iit delhi is shri ayush og ji collector he will be shortly coming ips shri ajay kumar tomar ji commissioner of police surat ias shri bachanidhi pani ji principal commissioner of surat he is also shortly coming dr shri harsha kota associate professor civil engineer department iit delhi dean student of fair and professor of civil engineering department iit delhi dr arvind k nima mr sachin dhawan senior research fellow iit delhi chairman of sgcc air environment committee kunal bhai shah our group chairman shri badrej bhai shah and umang shah my fellow colleagues at sgcc air office bearer invited guests participants member of sgcc air and environmental enthusiasts a very good evening all of to all of you and i wholeheartedly welcome you to this very important gathering to discuss the use of indigenous technology to control the air pollution honorable national green T tribunal has directed national task force for the air pollution monitoring in 124 cities of india out of which one out of this 124 cities gujarat has its four cities surat ahmedabad vadodara rajkot and 18 cities are from our neighboring state of maharashtra that 124 major cities in the country are continuously non compliant with the prescribed standard of air quality and for more than 5 years is a matter of serious national concern which needs to be addressed urgently at all levels of involvement of highest authorities it has been observed from the data that the highest contributory uh, causing the air pollution is vehicular pollution as well as the dust, dust generated from the road in the city pollution it has been observed that all the regulators have been always found industry and a businessman as a soft target and the facts are contradictory even though the industry is not the largest contributor to the pollution in general it is the moral duty of the industry people to contribute towards the betterment of the health of the entire society industry has been eager to do so not just for the society but such mitigation strategy will enhance the sustainability of our well being as well therefore we need a mitigation strategy implementation of the mitigation strategy always lies with the local administration and institution like us who can promote the right technologies and solution to mitigate this risk today we have the best brains with us who will surely enlighten us enlighten us in various indigenous technology in managing the urban air quality management i am sure that their inputs with their input we shall be able to remove the name of the cities 
of our region from this ngt monitoring list and help implementing to the implement the right to the health healthy life of our citizens once again i welcome you all to the wonderful gathering jai hind vande mataram thank you thank you sir for your kind words now i request mr girish luthra chairman luthra group and advisor environment pollution control and waste management committee to say few words about industry and environment of surat city good evening friends uh my respected dignitaries on the dais my industry colleagues and other friends of the dais apne ahiya bada surat and air quality health are the main in hindi and english sorry <laughs> we normally tend to go to gujarati sometimes subject interesting hai ki hum log air quality par focus karke baat kare अगर सूरत का डेटा देखा जाए टू स्टार्ट विथ तो एनी इंडस्ट्रियल सिटी विच इज देयर इन द वर्ल्ड सिमिलर टू दैट सूरत आल्सो इज कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू एयर पोल्यूशन इन एसपीएम लेवल्स प्रोबेबली ओनली अबाउट 35 38 परसेंट बाय इंडस्ट्री एंड द बैलेंस इज इधर बाय डस्टिंग ऑन द रोड और व्हीकलर ब्रॉडली leave aside the micro maybe 7 8% of the issues which are there and within industry it is probably uh, the numbers that are speaking would talk about roughly about 10 to 12% out of that 35 38% 10 to 12% is contributed by the power plant in the vicinity thermal power plant and roughly about 28 25% is through other industry which mainly includes textile chemicals who are using air quality i mean the air quality or the pollutant is because of the energy that means steam generation thermic fluid heaters boilers and thermic fluid heaters so by fuel now going back into more detail if i look at fuel we are looking at mostly surat is using uh, imported coal or lignite we were using gas sir and we all know that but because of non viability it became a challenge and uh, there is another aspect you know if we look at the total uh, life cycle or total analytics natural gas has sulfur problem which coal doesn't have uh, lignite has but imported coal doesn't have sulfur issue similarly uh, petco has now it is a trade off between spm 2.5 or sulfate then we have to still we still feel gas is better because of efficiency however viability is very little then we look at probably you know surat as a great example or towards some industrial solutions that we are looking at common boiler at for the smaller plants which are micro plants working at an efficiency of 50% so this common boiler mechanism which is working at about 80% gives a better performance and distribution losses of 1 or 2 or 4% which is acceptable of course slight amount of cost but overall for a 50% efficient guy is still cost effective doing common boiler and surat has already set an example and Uh, in sachin and uh, it is being replicated in ankleshwar and panoli and wapi and other places so this is generally broadly to be said common boilers for the larger plants for for process house is still a challenge because of the cost viability because they are normally 3 to 3 to 10 ton boilers in process house in this town and we are looking at कि उसके अंदर हमारा परफॉर्मेंस 65 70 परसेंट परफॉर्मेंस आ रहा है एफिशिएंसी में तो उसके ऊपर इंप्रूवमेंट एंड अब ऑल सब कुछ करें 
so the major other pollutant load for spm is dusting dust cleaning on the roads which is highest amongst the proportion that we have if we see our studies so that is one major and the second major coming up is two wheeler three wheeler not even four wheeler now uh, i'm sure pani sir will join us in some time and he will definitely say but i can only put one line that surat municipal corporation has taken up assignment all our administrators the collector office the police commissioner office that we want to be the largest and the first electrical vehicular city of the country and we will achieve it i mean to give examples maine mere ghar mein 6 mein se 3 gaadiyan ev ho chuki we are all gradually evolving with vehicular uh, corrections and my say to everybody aap apne doston ko bhi keh sakte hain i mean i go to bombay in an ev vehicle and there is no problem which is which is something good 300 kilometers from here achievement is there technology is right facilities are right in most of the cities there are enough facilities to start work so uh, that is one thing what we are doing in surat sir and uh, we all know ki abhi aage hamari jo plan surat municipal corporation ke i think commissioner sir would say more is to the extent ke buc se pehle multiple multi storied buildings mein we may come up with an idea that minimum itni parking to ev chahiye so all those things public area parking uh, malls may parking so that will cover up almost if i say the vehicular pollution which is accounting to 30 35% in the city for air pollution will reduce down by 60 65% if we achieve those kind of vehicles scooters are the most disturbing factor in terms of quality of air more than three wheelers because we have quite a few three wheelers on cng cng was first introduced in india in surat way back in 94 95 so with this background uh, i'm sure we have experts to talk and uh, it would be wrong on my part to talk beyond this i just wanted to give you a fair idea on what surat is only one thing i can say surat is a place where people adopt whatever is right or whatever is convinced so we are all here and sir we would love to listen to you and get your ideas we would love to associate long term also as industry platform on different various uh, associations i see quite a few leaders here that we can actually work on industrial side that is that 27 28% to be corrected and brought down to 20 or 18 whatever best we can and above all this the first method to be adopted is to reduce energy per kg of textile that is the best thing to be done sir we have achieved 20% reduction the scope is another 20% that much i know and uh, with this kind word uh, with this word sir all the platform is yours we would love to listen to you and your ideas how we can improve this city thank you thank you sir for your kind words now i request honored guest shri ajay kumar tumar ips commissioner of police surat to share few thoughts about this experts and friends on the dais members of south gujarat chamber of commerce and industries when ashish bhai told me there is a session on uh, air pollution and air uh, related environmental issues i thought i'll get to listen to some very knowledgeable things but i'm sorry today is a very busy day i will have to rush but i i never thought uh, i'll be asked to speak as well air act in india came into existence in 1981 i think but it was certainly amended in 1987 since then we have been fighting with various kind of uh, 
issues or internal issues simply because India is an aspiring country. Our per capita income today stands at less than $2,000 per year. And we are aspiring to be a middle <clears throat> income country for which the major contribution has to come from industries other than service sector. If we aspire to reach anywhere close to $4,000 or $5,000 per capita income, a lot of push has to come from industries. Surat is the hub of industries. I happen to visit Pandesara and Sachin industrial areas very frequently. But I noticed when I started visiting those areas that in a little while, if any vehicle was standing there, there used to be a layer of black suit on that. That was my experience of uh, other than going into SPM levels and uh, various statistics uh, in that vein. Came an opportunity. There was an esteemed member of uh, the Green Tribunal here. And there was an unfortunate incident as well in January when six people died because of some industrial affluence having been disposed of in an undesirable manner. That gave me an opportunity to look deeper into this. And uh, we took a very strict action. Almost everybody who was involved in that thing is behind bars. And those uh, who think they are quite big, they have not been able to visit their houses or even their farmhouses because our team is chasing them. Getting tough is one part, but as I told you, we are at a stage where we have to grow and we have to grow very fast. When a Rio summit or a Geneva summit or other summits take place, the developed world tell all those uh, countries at lower income levels to be very, very responsible as far as pollution levels are concerned. We have to grow, they have grown big and they, they grew rich when there was hardly any regime to control them. Now they are outsourcing almost everything that creates pollution. They have given it to countries like ours, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Vietnam, Thailand, and uh, we have to listen to their sermons. I'm sorry, I'm not an expert, but what I noticed, things are still manageable. For example, my personal experience is burning chindi in place of coal and gas is a very popular cheap alternative for people out to earn very fast money in whatever manner. During my discussions with that uh, Honorable Justice from the Green Tribunal, I decided that we can do something about it. Generally, people believe there is hardly any situation that police cannot make it worse. We, we, we thought otherwise. We tried to improve the situation. and. Uh, Friends from industrial, those areas, those who live there, who work there, whose units are there, they told me that improvement was to the tune of almost 90%. Just now, one of the friends was telling me that there is some difference, but 90%, if police can make a difference, police are not alone, I'm not taking the whole of the credit, because GPCB team, we take them along with us, and I've decided, I've told my inspector in those areas to conduct some more raids. Because chindi burning, it cries aloud in the air. Chimni se dikhta hai, dhuwa urta hua. India has done a lot. The government is very sensitive about it. Good that even citizens are getting careful about it. But the problem is, we have to look the problem straight in eyes. Jo kuch hua, wo kaise hua? Janta hu main. जो कुछ हुआ वो कैसे हुआ जानता हूं मैं जो कुछ नहीं हुआ ये बता क्यों नहीं हुआ थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर काइंड वर्ड्स वी फील वेरी सेफ टू हैव यू एज अ कमिश्नर इन सूरत सिटी नाउ डियर फ्रेंड्स इट इज टाइम टू वेलकम आवर ऑनरेबल गेस्ट आई रिक्वेस्ट श्री आशीष भाई गुजराती टू फेलिसिटेट Shri uh, Ajay Kumar Tomar, IPS Commissioner of Police.
now i request now i request shri ramesh vagasia vice president elect sgcci to felicitate professor mukesh kare professor emeritus civil engineering department iit delhi we recognize the presence of our virtual speaker professor yulia e associate professor department of civil and environmental engineering national university of singapore now i request shri badresh group chairman sgcci to felicitate mr sachin dhawan senior research fellow iit delhi now i request uh, mr girish lutra to felicitate dr shri harsha kota associate professor civil engineering department iit delhi now i would like uh, i would like to request mr kunal shah chairman of south gujarat chamber of commerce pollution control committee to shed light on today's topic our respected guest on the dais and the uh, friends basically when you think for the pollution and the air pollution specifically it's a a large area uh, when we are talking about the air pollution because when you think for the water pollution or something then it is always a limited area limited uh, effect of the concern uh, time but when you consider the air pollution then it's a when it's a it's in your home also it's part of the things and it is in the your office also your uh, whole city also so always air pollution will be the very large concern area so uh, when you think about our quality of the our city we are in the smart city we are proud of our city as a uh, smart city but smart city doesn't mean it's a healthy city because a smart city having a very good infrastructure in terms of pollution um, in terms of water treatment plants we have a solid waste management e waste management and many other waste management biomedical waste management drainage water supply uh, all the things but it doesn't mean to you have the quality of the air you have uh you have a surprise that uh, world most polluted cities uh 
majority city of the 100 city list of 100 most polluted city i think 60 70 80 cities is from the india and the one first city is the noida having the quality index is around 210 and then New Delhi at 13 number and having 178. We can say Agra at a 34 number, having 150. Air quality index of Varanasi is 149 and having number of 36. Ankleshwar at 37. At 149 and Mathura having the 140 at 51. But Surat is at 78. So we are generating an average 129. So, see, if you increase by, say, around 10 to 15 percent, we will become at 34 number. And if you increase 30 percent, then almost within the first 10, 20 city. So, it's, that is a, we how we are concerned about air pollution. We should concern. Because... If someone visited our industry and if you go through the most polluted cities, then they will avoid to visit our city. So that is the one area we should, why we are here and why we should require to focus on air pollution. That is the most concern things as per my point of view. You are surprised that what is the highest AQI in the every day? Every day at 9.45, as per the data of the 2021, year 2021, average air pollution index is highest at morning 9.45. So do you think at that time only industry is uh, discharging their pollutants from the chimney? Because we have maximum traveling people between 9 to 10, we have the shops is open at around this. We have the banks, we have the colleges, all the timings is the same. And we have majority our Insura city. We have the Diamond City, many, many workers, many uh, employees of the Diamond uh, uh, unit is working in these timings. They were traveling by two wheeler. So so that is the timing you should try to avoid that 945 is the worst. When you go through the Google, you can see that how we can save our call against this air pollution in Surat. Then they were suggested you should wear uh, 95 uh, masks. So that is the, that is not for the Corona. That is for the, to control the quality. If you have to, protect yourself, you should wear the N95 uh, pass. So this is the situation we should think. And always why we are the smart city is always think in advance. In Sura city, we have proud that now Diamond Boost is developing more than 10,000, 15,000 new offices started. Do you consider the around one lakh or two lakh people will be again enter in our Sura city, more than 20,000 vehicles loaded, increase the that load. Have you calculated the travel time of that two diamond boost and nearby diamond boost? What will be the ambient air quality after it will work fully? And then it will be a worse scenario in that area in terms of ambient air quality. Then this air quality index will be further increased. The limitation of our Sura city is that uh, it's always vertical development. We have a lot of high rise buildings and see what will be the things we always the crisis of the natural resources because we, when you develop the vertical development, then the dilution factor is always limited. Air quality cannot dilute. Why, why the America having more than 10 times vehicles, even though they have does not probably does that fall in the, this 100, 200 polluted cities. Because only thing is they have the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, their uh, road is such a design, more than 10, 12, 14 uh, path is there, six, one side, six other sides. So what will be there? That because they have generated uh, uh, pollutants, but dilution there. So always it will help the AQI is not increased, but generation is there. 
so we should also think for that that we cannot stop our progress and what will be the soft target is always industry there ngt is always find this against the pollution they are the maybe they have the generation of the pollution but it is required who is the real this aqi who is generate that aqi that we have to identify and that we have to put our efforts and that why we are arranging this seminar that that should be work in details in technically that who is the where is the hot spots where is the sources where, where we have to uh, put our efforts who is the generators and what is their impact and what will be the future impact in coming years due to the industrial growth and the all other areas basically in my opinion there is a vehicle is also a major part of the air pollution uh, generations in terms of traffic also chimney also quality of the fuel also construction site also so always these of the areas is the technically generated but we should identify what is the percentage of these sites and what is the impact in that areas so that is the uh, main goal on this seminar our learner professors having a lot of expertise in this area the dr mukesh khare specifically and his whole team have done lot of exercises for the center pollution control board even pmo even different committees so he has experience of the uh, uh, why the, uh, the air quality is not improving in delhi area so we have that benefit uh, of their experience so that we can put in the proper direction otherwise if you want to go and what with the your direction the direction should be proper then we can have a uh, we will uh, achieve the results i also like to put some points in terms of how we can uh, improve the air quality मैं अगर बात करूं रिंग रोड की देखिए आप अगर रिंग रोड में जाते हैं तो आजकल ब्रिज बंद है तो अगर मैंने कई फॉरेन कंट्रीज में देखा है कि जहाँ मैक्सिमम ट्रैवलिंग होते हैं जहाँ लोग जाते हैं तो वहां पे क्या करते हैं कि दे वो कंट्रोल द व्हीकल यू कैन नॉट गो इन व्हीकल हम लोग क्यों नहीं कर सकते हैं आप कह दो कि भाई इलेक्ट्रिकल टू व्हीलर कैन ऑनली अलाउ between 9 am to 9 pm no four wheelers except electrical vehicles will allow you will give some sufficient time after 6 month all the below ring road if you have a traveling above bridge is okay but below ring road you can restrict the things then you can find the quality of the air then you can differentiate because if you are going to on that vehicle for a few minutes but you have suffer a 8 hours or 9 hours during staying in that market so i i this, some some like these ideas we should put our uh, contribute the systems sometimes where many industry having the workers many diamond industry having a 400 500 two wheelers immediately enter at 8 o'clock and when close at 7 o'clock something at a time they have gone out so what will be the happen that at a time source emission generate and the ambient air quality is worse affected so we can uh, develop the system that every 5 10 minutes 10 50 people can uh, move from the factory so then it will help the system so many many small small ideas there how we can put and how we can improve the quality of the city it's basically our baby you pollution is air quality is our baby our city we all citizen are the responsible for the if you improve the quality you enjoy the health all the system and if you 
if you not improving then again it's a your health problem so i i i request all the uh, uh, persons and all the citizens of the surat city put their efforts to improve the quality and um, today i will uh, we will help by the guidance of this learned professor to improve our quality thank you very much sir thank you so much for your kind words kunal sir i want to now introduce to us next speaker professor yulia e she has more than 25 years of experience in air quality and modeling fields she has completed a phd and masters from stanford university i request professor yulia e to please give a informative presentation over to you ma'am thank you for the kind introduction may i know that whether you can hear me yes we can hear you ma'am all right very good let me share screen i am very glad to join the great event to share about singapore's journey in managing the air urban air quality because of a limited time i will simply highlight a few progresses lessons we learned and emerging challenges let me get the slide going situated just a quick overview situated at 1 degree north of the equator singapore hosts a vibrant daily activities for around 5.5 million people which actually is 30% lower than around 7.7 7.8 7 million people in surat metro area singapore then needs to encompass all industrial commercial and residential areas in a land of 720 km square which is around 1.5 times of a surat land area that's why you can see that a surat uh, metro area is a lot more densely populated than singapore now having all activities within a relatively small land area leads to complicated composition of the airborne pollutants which are emitted locally and also transported from neighboring areas to better understand the sources and processes affecting air quality for the densely populated city state over the years the national environment agency nea in singapore has boosted the effort of monitoring ambient air quality by expanding five major station to the main islands uh, to a total of uh, 18 over various parts of the islands as shown as the small triangle symbols over here and they also added uh, four station just devoted to the road side to assess the uh, traffic emissions now let me uh, give a quick example of uh, progress as an example effective implementation of policies can work in general singapore is lucky in the way that a government uh generally has a uh, forthcoming cooperation from industries and residents in addition to regulating on road vehicle age and numbers reducing sulfur content for example like uh, introducing euro 5 reducing petrol sulfur to lower than 10 ppm back in 2017 contributes to reduction of uh, so2 over the years you can see that there is a more drastic decrease in 2020 but that's because of um, the pandemic during the covid-19 national lockdown you can also see that as the time goes by the city state singapore tries to resume the industrial activities then the so2 start to increase back now the next one 
is uh, just for your information, Singapore adopts the air quality monitoring system similar to US EPA. Among the criteria pollutants, PM2.5 is very often the responsible pollutant determining the air quality to be released and communicated to the general public. Now you can see from the slide data over here that there is uh, certainly rooms for improvement. Singapore originally has a short-term goal of reaching 12 microgram per cubic meter by 2020, which is shown in the purple line over here. Now, the challenge becomes even more daunting as uh, WHO recently, well, starting October last year, recommending the annual average PM2.5 concentration down to five microgram per cubic meter. So there are a lot of things that uh, we can do further to reach the goal. Now, one thing that one of the challenge uh, affecting the PM2.5 concentration in the urban area is the transported peat forest smoke, which leads to severe smoke episodes in uh, four years, such as the block box, the dash line in 21.2, and 1.9. Now these years, because of the transported smoke, that substantially enhance the PM2.5 concentration and certain specific, uh, certain specific components therein. Now, by studying the smoke aerosols so back in 21.5, the smoke episodes, actually we learned the carbon in the PM2.5 is of 800 years old. Now, this is an evidence to show us that uh, demonstrating the smoke actually is burning the peat underground, which is a unique and different feature from other common forest fire burning and also the agriculture waste burning, such as uh, uh, rice stubbles, right? Very different. So this is a unique issue in our region for us to handle. But by learning from the lessons of a smoke episodes, that we together with the uh, government agency that we study and develop the uh, smoke indicator so that we can have a faster uh, response and communication preparing the general public. Now, the next one is based on the source apportionment results of, uh, during 2011 and 2019. What we see is that as time goes by, Singapore strives to reduce local emissions. And as a result, the fractional contribution of a transported pollutants become more and more important because nowadays we see that they contribute around half of a PM2.5 in the urban environment. And therefore we see that the transport uh, emission and transported airborne pollutants in the future is going to be a one of the major area for Singapore to work on and maybe collaborate with our neighboring uh, regions and countries. Other emerging challenges of managing air quality is the unexpected uh, changes in our ambient environment. For example, during the pandemic, Although NOx concentration is decreasing during the lockdown of uh, 2020, uh, but at the same time, we see there is an increase in ozone concentration. Although this is initially counterintuitive, but from the perspective of understanding atmospheric chemical reaction, this is actually not that surprising. This is due to complicated chemical reactions of VOCs and uh, NOx and there's a uh, dynamic situation and therefore leading to increase of ozone. Now, where the city states try to uh, resume industrial activity, really open the gate. Now we will see that uh, the situation and pollutant composition will start to change significantly. 
Now, there is, in addition to the changing environment, the formation of nano-sized aerosol is another area that uh, we deserve in our attention. We have seen that because of the depth of uh, planetary boundary layer changes, the nighttime aerosol, nano, especially nano-sized aerosols, the number concentration is actually 1.5 times of daytime. And from here, I learned that uh, maybe exercising outdoor during the nighttime is not that a good idea. Um, one last area that I would like to highlight as an emerging area to deserving the attention for air quality monitoring is the uh, urban heat island effect. Well, this is especially occurring in densely populated urban environment that uh, urban heat islands can change the dynamics and reactions among airborne pollutants. And this is also related to climate change in the future. And that's why that this is another area that deserving our attention uh, for us to have a more understanding and study. With this, I know the time is limited. Let me thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Yulia, for your kind words. Now I introduce you to today's speaker, Professor Mukesh Khareji and his team who have come here all the way from Delhi, especially for this program. Since we have less time, Professor Mukesh Khare, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much and good evening to everybody. Uh, thank you, the president, uh, SGCA, Mr. Gujarati and vice president and Kunal as well as Umang and other dignitaries who invited me to share my experience. And uh, Mr. Tomer who was speaking and I was uh, listening very carefully that NGT was very much unhappy to some incidents from the Gujarat. I'll tell you my experience with the NGT before I start my presentation. NGT is an organization which takes decision entirely based on data. They don't believe in qualitative description or qualitative reasonings. If you can present themselves to them, the data-based conclusions, they will immediately you know, uh, take the decisions in favor of that particular person. You know? uh, so I tell you my very briefly my experience with NGT the government of India has sanctioned a super thermal power plant in one of the states in North India called a district called Kurja. This is near Delhi, about 90 to 100 kilometers from Delhi. And uh, there, the lot of oppositions and uh, processions from the public was there. And Kurja itself is a dense uh, industrial area with the pottery industries there. So people were saying over there with some, uh, you know, uh, societies and NGOs that this super thermal power plant of 2000 megawatts will create havoc to the town, as well as the pollution will reach to Delhi itself because the air distance is very low. So and that uh, so the construction of the super thermal power plant being done by NTPC and uh, Terry De uh, Development uh, Corporation, TSDC was stopped. So NGT gave this task to me uh, and uh, he, they asked CPCB to help me and to find out whether this complaint from the uh, uh, you know, environmental activists are correct or not. Don't, and uh, I tell you, we spent about 10 days, day and night over there with CPCB team. And we did a very extensive monitoring of the PM 2.5, NOx and SOx, day and night with using all the uh, standard reference equipments. And uh, we also did on-site wind analysis, the dynamics of wind analysis. 
and uh, we analyzed the data very carefully and we found ultimately our conclusion was based on the data that most of the pollution which super thermal plant power plant is going to give when it will be constructed will be away from delhi away from the town for 80% time of the year only 20% time of the year we were founding that the wind directions and uh, the pollution was being transported by the wind towards the uh, delhi but that amount of pollution we analyzed that much much more less than the pollution which was generated by the small scale pottery industries which are there in about more than 500 having a chimney or height of more not more than 20 feet or 30 feet so this was presented by cpcb to the ngt and do you and i tell you the ngt immediately dismissed the case they immediately dismissed the case saying with a note that this case will not be unheard and cannot be uh, you know challenged in this uh, further court because we have done so that is the ngt response so i think ngt needs database uh, you know uh, analysis and database conclusion they appreciate the things that's what my experience with the ngt so based on this my you know uh, uh, this experience i am going to present uh, today's uh, lecture that how we can improve the uh, the surat conditions for the air quality and how we can work so that in the future ngt may not discredit the beautiful city of the surat and the industries okay the next slide Okay, the, see, this is the Surat geography, I'll just start with the geography of the Surat. Now, if you see the Surat geography, it is southern part of the Gujarat, having some latitude and longitude over here. Elevation is about 13 meters from the sea level. And the geographical area is about 4,000 square meters, square kilometers, sorry. And major industry as in the morning, they said it's textile. Mr. Lutra has explained already what type of industries we found over here. And with diamond cutting and processing, which is a world famous. So Surat is known for its industrial activities, you know. Next, please. Now, there are two uh, uh, industrial, major industrial area, which I have also visited these two areas the last time when I came, Sachin and Pandasera, and I've seen the industries. I have seen the conditions of those industries. I've seen the conditions of the road over there. And when I compare with the Okla in Delhi and Bhavana in Delhi and Narela in Delhi, I think the conditions in Surat are much, much, much better than the conditions which I found in Delhi industrial area. While their industries are not like here, most of the industries in Okla and et cetera are very small scale industries and mainly the industries which are electroplating, et cetera. Not, you know, so, so in that case, you know, with comparable to Delhi, the industrial area are much cleaner and much more you know, uh, organized than the industries in Delhi. Next, please. Now, as far as the Surat air quality is concerned, this I am not very much convinced and I was surprised when I was looking at the CPCB website that uh, the Surat industrial, the, the Surat area, you know, there are only 10 stations which are manual, which I found from the website. And uh, these 10 stations are either run by GPCB or uh, CPCB. Uh, the municipal corporation runs two stations that also details not given on the website. And the four stations are run by some private, you know, IQ Air at, by Environment SA India, which is sensor based. And what type sense, what type of sensors they are using, we don't know that, you know. So I think this is the uh, place. So this is the issue where Surat has to improve a lot because we don't have enough monitoring stations. We don't have any CAQF. <clears throat> now, Surat has a population of 77 lakh, while Ahmedabad is population of more than 80 lakhs. Ahmedabad is having 16 continuous ambient air monitoring station. How they have got it? We don't have any here. <coughs> this, this, this has to be explained and has to be pursued. Uh, as I, I thought that I saw when I was looking website, not area, but uh, uh, population. <coughs> it is double, yes. 
Yeah, but in CPCB, uh, you know, uh, criteria for established number of station is population based. Still, I'm not convinced with that criteria, but it's a population based. So more than 50 lakhs, they have defined that so many of background stations manual, so many of, uh, you know, uh, continuous ambient air monitoring station, etc. they have defined it, if you see the table. So in that case, 16 stations should be here in Surat, at least minimum 16 stations, but we don't have any. I think this is the area where Surat has to do a quick, you know, action to get into the, you know, uh, uh, picture. Now, this is the criteria which I was looking at, the CPCB criteria, which they follow here. <coughs> and I'm sure that NCAP has given money to all non-attainment cities. Enough money has been given for purchase of the instruments. So if SGCCI can contact the NCAP and the uh, GPCB, you know, <coughs> this can be done. Next, please. <coughs> Now, this is the urban air quality management framework, which is being followed at the moment by Central Pollution Control Board, as well as many educational institutions and other regulatory agencies. In this, I'm only going to cover three broad components of the urban air quality management for any city. You know, there are three main components here. One is the monitoring. This is the major component. That's a basic for any air quality management to start with. Monitoring will give you a data. Monitoring of what? Ambient air monitoring, that is in terms of concentration and monitoring in terms of the emission. Now, as far as ambient air concentration, I, with the last slide, I think we are, lag, we are lagging behind a lot. So we have to enforce this. We have to make it more strengthen it. The emission monitoring, I think we have to do emission inventory. I was told that with the World Bank aid, uh, Professor Christian was telling in the morning that Terry and uh, World Bank aid and some other agencies, I think GPCB, they have carried out the emission inventory of the Surat city. But we were trying to get it from the website, but we did not get any uh, data on the emission inventory. I don't know whether it's a public domain or not. If they have done, they should put on the public domain. Okay, so that we have not checked. Sachin, we have checked it or not? Or SMC, check. So we have not checked the municipal corporation side. We are checking the GPCB side. So that emission inventory, if you have, I think that the way we have to see that what type of methodology they have used in the emission inventory because CPCB has recently come out with a protocol of the emission inventory under the NGT program for 124 non-attainment city, the similar protocol is being used by the various cities. So that CPCB has ensured that there should not be any non-uniformity in, in doing the emission inventory. So I think that has to be uh, seen that what method Terry has used in this emission inventory. If Are they following the same protocol of the CPCB or not? So monitoring become the first box that we have to strengthen it as quick as possible, right? By any mean. Then come the source apportionment, which depends upon the emission inventory. Dr. Kota will cover more on that because he's expert in the source apportionment and the emission inventory because he has done the whole emission inventory of the 10 cities in Punjab state. So he will, he will cover, I won't touch these two things. The, the third box is the modeling which is, we call it as a decision support system, where we use the data, input data, like monitoring data, emission data, and meteorological data, and then we forecast it. And for, with the forecasted data, we generally you know, plan the interventions. Now, in this forecasting, the modeling can be done in two ways. One is the city scale model, urban scale model, which Dr. Kota will tell how it is not useful if you compare with the hotspot based modeling. Because city, we have a heterogeneous development. We are not city like, uh, you know, uh, like London or like New York or other cities in the West, with the development is very uniform. It's a planned development. Our the development is very heterogeneous. So here the city based forecasting, city based urban air quality management will always fail. We have to have a local scale air quality management plan, which is based on 
the local scale emission data and then interventions which hot which are the hot spot and then in that hot spot which are the sources which are creating this exceedances in the pollution level and then we should tap the those uh, pollution sources as mr kunal was telling that the traffic why can't in the bridge the traffic can be diverted why can't the traffic can be stopped at certain time all these decision we can take with the decision support system by the forecasting method because we have all the data and mind you that other thing which i would like to share here which i am speaking always in the central pollution control board and will they agree with that that all these emission uh, sorry the decision support system the forecasting should be done based on emission because it is easy to handle the emission it is easy to analyze the emission data rather than the concentration data which is not controllable by us it is controlled by the meteorology so better to use the emission and then use the models and then forecast the concentration based on the emission and what were the concentration we have got we have we can compare with the uh, you know instrument uh, the coqms data and then uh, you know that is the way we generally follow for the cities in punjab for which we are doing the uh, you know emission source apportionment and emission monitoring next please now the current this is i think we have already covered because the status of source apportionment and the status of emission inventory that has to be checked uh, that what type of methodology they have used and what data they have used next please now another improvement which surat can start with that is the hybrid air quality monitoring network you know that's uh, this continuous ambient air quality monitoring instruments are very expensive it is not like that surat will be having 40 caqms that is not possible because it involves money second the maintenance cost of this caqms is about a crore per annum you know that is very very high cost maintenance cost and the operational cost is also very high you need one skill person then power cost and many other things are there so you we cannot afford to have 30 40 or 50 caqms so we can have the you know maybe 16 or 20 like delhi have 35 and sometimes it has become very difficult for delhi to maintain all the stations and some or other one of stations are always uh, functioning is not uh, proper because of the maintenance so to avoid to 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 tackle this issue the a new uh, you know term has been coined by us that we should use a hybrid air quality monitoring network that we have a, about 16 stations then in between the stations or beyond the station we should use some sensors now i am not advocating sensors that you can use arbitrarily any sensor you buy and fix it no there are some pre work is required to make the sensors assured that they give the correct data because sensor data are not reliable and sensor data is not used for regulatory purposes it's only used for the information purpose so the hybrid air quality monitoring network is much more advantages and beneficial and economic economical than rather than using only 16 or 15 or 10 caqms for the area of like like surat you know or any other city in gujarat next please now can you go back now for this uh, sensor based we have developed a uh, pm 2.5 sense, uh, sensors which prototype has already been developed it has been patented and it is being done on the funding from ministry of human resources and development uh, and uh, mhrd under the uchitar avishkar yojana you know this was uh, about 4 years back so we got the funds about uh, you know more than a, a crore or so and then with the uh, uh, industrial participation one of the industry participated with us which who contributed about 25 percent that is envirotech india private limited 25 percent of the cost they contributed and we developed this new sensor based on the technology which is entirely different than the present sensors which you are getting in the market it is based on the holographic technique where this sensor is not sensitive to temperature and humidity while other sensors are very sensitive to temperature and humidity but this sensor is not so one prototype has been developed now we are uh, you know with the cpcb we are going to get more funds we have already submitted our project and we are going to test it in the field with the caqms for different seasons next please 
Now this comparison, I have compared this uh, table with the Sensure ARPM 2.5 sensors with the sensors which are av available in the market these days. You know, so this is uh, this table shows that our sensors of PM 2.5 based on the holographic technique, you know, is suitable for all conditions and which we have tested in the laboratory. Next, please. And it has been patented also. Now, HAQM, uh, HAQMN, that is a hybrid system of the air quality monitoring, you know, this is a, 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 a sort of a network for which a, a evaluation protocol has been made for the sensors because we are going to use sensors hybrid with the CAQMS. So we, we have already developed the evaluation protocol so that a proper sensor, a good sensor can be used. They can be evaluated for their performance and then use in the field. No arbitrarily selection of the sensors. And this protocol has been submitted to Central Pollution Control Board. And most probably we have about meeting last week only. And we are going to notify it very soon in coming months. Next, please. Now, this is the sighting criteria. Now, if you see the right side table, the conventional sighting criteria is this, which I am not at all satisfied with the conventional one. The, uh, you just saw the Singapore presentation in which they have put the roadside monitoring network system, you know, instruments also. But in the conventional criteria, which we follow in India, we don't have any roadside. We have residential, we have commercial, we have industrial, we have rural ecologically sensitive area. This is the conventional one. So we are missing the roadside. Where roadside instrument monitoring is very essential as because the traffic is one of the major source of the pollution for any city. So the uh, smart criteria says location will be this, which I have you know, you know, uh, listed over here. Apart from residential, commercial, industrial, rural, ecologically sensitive area, there should be an urban background and there should be a traffic station. These two stations must be established if you plan in Surat City, when you be, go for CAQMS, we should plan accordingly for that. You know. So that will help a lot in analysis or in forecasting in using the models. Next, please. This is the uh, IoT-based smart air quality data transfer system, which we have designed in the project of Sense Your Air, which we have described, funded by under the Uchita Ravishkar Yojana with IIT Madras, with the computer science department over there. And it has been patented also, sent for patent. And this is a very smart data transferring system. This is the IIT Madras campus, which you are seeing over here. And on the yellow things you are seeing is the sensors which we have put. And these sensors are evaluated already in the, you know, with the evaluation protocol. So that their, uh, uh, you know, uh, corrections and their efficiency and their outcome performance is known to us whether they are you know, suitable or not. And then there is a cloud-based uh, server over there where the data is directly transferred over there. And then there is a, on the left side, a person in the uh, you know, uh, decision theater is sitting with the laptop or with the computer and then downloading all the data and analyzing the data. So this IoT-based data, smart data transfer system, we have already designed and it is being worked in the IIT Madras campus very successfully of that. So in case we just do something in Surat, I would like to see that this site up sort of smart data transfer system must be kept, you know, or designed in the place. Next, please. This is a sensor reliability analysis because nowadays sensor is being used and CPCB has already uh, issued a notification about last week not to use sensor arbitrarily that CPC is already issued because sensor data, you know, um, gives a lot of a wrong information. These sensors are electrochemical or semiconductor based and they are very sensitive to the temperature and humidity. And in India, you know, the temperature varies from like in Delhi, two degree to 45 degree. You know, so a lot of variations similarly with the humidity. The sensor has to be evaluated first with the evolution protocol, which we have developed. And then it has to be corrected for temperature and humidity because there are two parameters which affects its concentration output. So that's the way we have designed a, a machine learning based neural network uh, you know, uh, techno, uh, te technique for uh, sensor reliability analysis. And this reliability parameter has been included 
in the sensor in our sensor of sensor air pm2.5 as one of the you know parameters which will tell how reliable this sensor is right so this uh, this is a uh, another thing which we would like to do if you know sensor based hybrid air quality monitoring network is established in the surat so that the it cannot be questioned by the regulators next please now this is a decision support system which we are using in delhi with professor kota will explain much more better than that because he is involved with the central pollution control board and this decision support system is has worked very efficiently for uh, you know city of delhi in forecasting the uh, you know the concentration and this is based on emission whatever the forecasting we have done it is based on the emission from different sources next please now apart from all these monitoring and modeling which we have done from the urban air quality management there are smart interventions using the natural barrier this is another thing which i would like to share in delhi we have started this next please green infrastructure we call it as a gi based uh, smart interventions uh, for the for urban planning solutions now these photographs you are seeing is uh, you know is from uh, various places and locations from delhi which they are using the green uh, street trees vegetation barriers green or living walls or green or living roofs which surat can think of using that and uh, but only thing that uh, a city has to uh, very careful in selecting the species of the tree it should be native species it should not be ki aapne koi bhi ped laga diya aur koi bhi shrub laga di aur aisa nahi hona chahiye it should be native species which can really effective next please on the top of these four i think this is on the right most side this is a chirag delhi road and they have planned it it is recently made you know so you see that there are shrubs there are a green uh, uh, you know partition between the pedestrian and the main road you know and then there is a uh, you know uh, green uh, wall type of thing similarly the second uh, also on the from the right side this is one of the flyovers where they have put the climbers you know so that you know green wall type of thing you know and the, on the right side the left side left most side is the uh, pillar of the flyover which they have made with the green wall i think these are the things which surat can think of which surat will looks more beautiful i don't know whether i have not seen it when i was coming from ki such type of things are being used in that and these are the selection criteria i think uh, one of my, our student with under professor kota she is working on the green infrastructure and the selection criteria etc you know we have, we have finalized has been listed over there which can be used in surat if surat wants to uh, do something on that in green infrastructure next please now this is another thing if if you come to delhi i think i will tell you to visit this center this is called paharpur business center some of you might have visited but if you not you must visit this is a a person whose name is varun and he is a running about a, a old building of 9 story or 10 story he retrofitted it into a green building and on the rooftop he has put lot of plantations shrubs native species selected very carefully and then all the air which it sends to the different floors by air conditioning system is first passed through this uh, plantation from the roof there about 70 to 8 to 60 to 70% of the particles are removed there itself so there are two advantage benefits of that one is that energy consumption of the ahus is becomes less because particles are already removed by this uh, rooftop plantation and the second is that the filtration fil filtering efficiency of the air conditioning system is increased because they are not uh, you know uh, exhausted very quickly so i think that is a really a, a good initiative this uh, businessman has started in a paharpur tower and the building is about 30 years old so he has done retrofitted it in such a way so it's a beautiful building and all the most of the computer and software industries are there in this building so and very clean air and inside he has put all automation indoor air quality monitors are there humidity monitors are there temperature monitors are there and everybody knows what is the condition of pollutant co concentration co2 concentration etc in its in his room right so that is the way the you know this tower paharpur tower is working next please 
Now, technological interventions which we are doing at the moment in Delhi, it is on the experimental stage, is the smog tower. Next, please. These are two smog towers being constructed in Delhi. One is in the Anand Vihar in East Delhi, which is a very heavy, uh, you know, uh, trafficked area, having a metro station, railway station, and one of the most busiest bus stations over there, interstate bus station. There we are constructing the smog tower. And other is in the center Delhi at the Connaught Place. The Connaught Place one is done by the Delhi Pollution Control Committee. F funding was from DPCC, while the Anand Vihar Tower is funding from the Central Pollution Control Board. Now, the tower is under experimental stage. Data is under being taken. Its performance is being studied. You know, so I cannot comment at the moment. And IIT Bombay is a leading P a principal investigator in that. With my colleague, Dr. Kota is co-PI in that, who is uh, working with the IIT Bombay in this mock tower experiments. Next, and the tower uh, uh, height is 25 meter, I think, isn't it? To total height of the tower. So I won't comment much on that until the final results come to how the smog tower is functioning, with how it is being efficient, and how far the air is cleaned, you know, around the smog tower. So this is one of the overview of the technology which I have got uh, from the IIT Bombay website, which I have just described. But only the recurring cost is very high because change of filters and uh, all these things are the thing which has to be evaluated first. So recurring cost will be very high. Power cost will be very high. Whether it is feasible or not, this technology, this is, we have to see. Next, please. The indirect interventions, which I would like to say here, solar tower and generator pools, which, uh, you know, I am advocating in with Central Pollution Control Board. Next, please. Now, solar tower is very interesting tower. And when I came last time, I visited Dholera here in Gujarat, and I uh, told this, and uh, they, uh, they said they are going to get in touch with the physics group of the IIT Delhi, who has made the vertical solar towers. It will, you know, uh, take less space. And uh, these vertical solar tower, the solar panel, automatically, they have designed a system, automatically it moves with the solar angle, sun angle. It moves uh, automatically. And uh, uh, the prototype uh, experiments which has been done at the rooftop main building of IIT Delhi, it shows that the solar the efficiency of this vertical solar tower is how much high, higher, Sachin? 20 to 25% higher than the conventional solar panels. That's what the study and research has been done. A startup has been already created in based in Bangalore. And very soon, I think this is going to come into the market. So I think if any of you will be interested, you, you know, we, we can help you or you can get directly in touch with Professor D.S. Mehta, who is principal investigator in designing this vertical solar tower. The thing is that you will save the space, precious space cost in vertical solar tower. Next, please. Now, generator pool, because this idea came when I saw a steam, common uh, pool steam uh, boiler in Sachin, which, uh, you know, Mr. Luthra was talking in the morning. I think, why can't we do generator pool? Because we cannot uh, go away with the generator because of the power. Generator has to be used. And every, every industry might be having generator of different capacity. Why can't we use the big generator at one place for three, four industries and then supply the, you know, uh, generator power with those industry depending upon the need. So this is another uh, you know idea which is be which may be tested uh, in uh, uh, at various industrial areas to make a pool for the generator. And this has been shared in one of the workshop which was conducted at the University of Birmingham in UK. And they really like this uh, thing and they are going to test it you know in one of the projects which through British councils in the industrial area in India in future. Next, please. So with this, I think I thank you for your patience listening. And uh, in case, uh, Umang, you have any questions or anything later or what? OK, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Kare. I'm sure uh, on your next visit, uh, you will find more number of uh, ambient monitoring stations in Surat. and. Uh, Paharpur Business Center, we also would like to have something known as Surat Business Center, where we have more plants, what you have shown in that picture. Uh, now I call upon on stage, uh, Dr. Kota from IIT Delhi to give a valuable thought.
okay i thought maybe without mic i am audible so <laughs> so let me try with the mic so i have a tendency i cannot stand still i tend to walk and run so if i'm going away from the mic I, i'll try to increase the volume of my throat okay so uh, i thank the organizers for this wonderful opportunity to to discuss about our idea about what how to make a feasible action plan for any city and for surat especially today so i am uh, sri harsha kota uh, associate professor in department of civil engineering of iit delhi so um, i would like to take you to the past past means pre covid era what is happening to gujarat surat in last few years everything is simulation based not observation based so we have done we use some air quality models to simulate air quality in india and as a part of for this presentation i have extracted some data from it so uh, before i start i would like to give maybe small fundamental background about air quality and meteorology especially wind speed and mixing layer height because when we talk about concentrations there are three things that you should remember first emissions that we all know we have been talking reduce emissions industries contribute to this much vehicles contribute to this much the second thing is meteorology which results in the dispersion or movement of any pollutant which is released at one point to another location right then finally this all result in concentration so these three are the main aspects of of air pollution in general so how important is meteorology when we talk about air quality especially in terms of concentration so i'm giving i'm showing you a okay uh, animation just to explain it so please don't think this is how a city would look like and it has only three sources so source one is a, if you see it's a huge truck means i'm telling it's it's vehicles and i'm assuming the emissions are even source two is an industrial stack emissions are e2 and e3 are road dust resuspension of road dust i think every one of us should have seen this resuspension of road dust industrial stack and also vehicles and let's say this box represents surat right with length and width so uh, god has been very smart he has divided we can now geographically divide okay this is the boundary of surat but unfortunately we cannot tell this is atmosphere of surat right we cannot go up and tell uh, after 1 km this is no longer surat this is some other city we cannot tell right so then when we talk about concentrations is mass per unit volume so we always talk about mass of emissions in uh, surat and we talk about per volume of surat when we talk about volume we know it is area into height area we know geographical area municipal boundary or whichever we can tell the area of surat then what about the height height is something called mixing layer height where in when we talk about air quality basics mixing layer height is an imaginary layer below which is what all the activities are playing a role and above which everything there is no role of you no know, surface emissions or even surface uh, uh, actions or may surface roughness is negligible right above which and this height changes with season right so i hope i explained it clearly now how do we estimate concentrations sum of all emissions i have only three sources fictitious divided by length into width into height we are happy now i have a concentration c1 right now let's imagine a case where this height became 0.5 h and it generally happens uh, in winter the site decreases in summer the site is is more right now i have now because winter the site decreases we cannot decrease the area of surat right winter or summer the geographical area of surat is same now the concentration what will happen it will be twice of c1 assuming the emissions are same so what am i what am i trying the information that i am trying to give you is let the emissions be same the meteorology can double the concentration 
right? I hope I have driven this example clearly. Now, there is one way in addition to the mixing layer head, there is also wind speed, which is important because we all know you, you, there's industry, there is something is emitting, we should have seen many times. If the wind speed is high, it could reach farther distances and also it can dilute, it will dilute faster. But when speed is slow, we can clearly see the plume and that's when we get scared more and more, right? So wind speed is also very important. Together, there is a parameter which uh, the air quality scientists use called ventilation coefficient, which is multiplication of wind speed and mixing layer height. Okay, uh, where, and ventilation coefficient is less. That means the dilution is less and concentrations tend to be more. Yeah, I, I'm very sorry if I brought you back to your school days where someone is standing and giving you lecture on some fundamentals. Hopefully you did not get bored. I, that was important so that I drive my next few slides easily. So what I've done is I have done simulations for entire India and I'm just extracting for Surat and Gujarat. This is for Gujarat. For 2016 to 2019, there are three rows. First row, I'm only showing winter simulations. First row is PM 2.5 concentration. Second is ventilation coefficient. Third is emission. Let's look at row number one. The first column is for 2016 and second, third, fourth is percentage change. For example, this is 2017 minus 2016 by 2016, right? Percentage change in 2017 compared to 2016. So from this, we see that the concentrations in Surat, in Gujarat have increased. See the red color. This is around 60, 80, 70%, right? So for especially in 2018, the concentrations were high. So if you show this to anyone, they will tell, yes, Gujarat is emitting more, right? Let us look at the last row. Same thing. See the percentage change? It is either negligible change or slightly more, maybe hardly 15, 20% and some place it is higher. So what does it mean? Emissions were same throughout in this last, in these four years. But your concentrations have gone up up to 80% in some places. What is the reason? The reason is your ventilation coefficient. Your ventilation coefficient has significantly decreased, even up to 80, 90% in some place, some location. So what does this mean? You have done all the good work, but God did not like you. It is not favorable. Meteorology is God, right? It is not favorable. So what can we do? We cannot do but pray. So now with this, why I have told you, it is because when you promise reduction, don't promise concentration reduction. Promise emission reduction because you, concentration reduction is not in our hands as I just showed you, but emission reduction is in our hands. We can come up with more control technologies to reduce the overall emissions in a city, but the expected resultant in concentration could vary by the meteorology, which is not in our hands, right? And I have simulated till 2013 in India, 20, even 2014 in India, our meteorology is getting worse and worse because of the climate change and expect more and more, less and less dilution and this effect to be more maximized. Okay, so this is for Surat especially, I have, we have compared. So the bottom line is one meter reduction in mixing layer height resulted in two microgram per meter cube concentration. And to one meter per second reduction in wind speed resulted in 16 microgram per meter cube concentration. So you can imagine how significant meteorology is, is in even in Surat, not just in Gujarat. Okay, so this is a source apportionment result where industry is contributing, of course, it changes with season, sometimes 30%, this for PM2.5, this for PM10, and 51%, 17 at 7%, whichever. It keeps changing, right? So if I show this, you will tell, okay, action plan for Surat, let us reduce emissions from industries by 50%, then the concentrations would come down by certain factors, right? If you see, this is a, the bigger pie is industry in this. Of course, in this, you like a, a residential is more, or some other sources are more. But is it fair? So th the next part of my talk is, is it right to have a uniform clean air action plan for the entire city? This I'm talking based on our experience in Delhi, especially in other cities in the country. So there was one project which we did for Delhi, where, uh, for CPCB, where we came up with bi-weekly action plans. For every two weeks in Delhi in winter, 
we gave them some action plans to what to do so that the concentrations come more. So uh, it was well taken, especially in the news, because anything you do on air quality in Delhi, you are always in the news for good or bad reasons. So the approach was something like this. We did a regional air quality modeling. Then we did an urban city modeling. Then we did a hotspot specific modeling so, so that we could study each and every hotspot in the city in detail. So more details are there in the published paper here. So there are two interventions. One is, will a city-wide intervention give the result or will a hotspot specific intervention give the result? City-wide means I reduce emissions from vehicles by 50% throughout the city, which is almost impossible. You cannot reduce a source uniformly throughout the city. In any city, in any world, it is impossible. How do you tell? For example, when we talk about odd even rule, it, it is not 50%. It has its own negative point because it is only on Delhi number board vehicles. And you know that in Delhi, apart from Delhi number board, you have vehicles from Haryana, from other states also flying in, right? And also it has its own you know, point. So there is, you cannot restrict and restricting emissions maybe for a day is okay, but not forever, right? So citywide has its own challenges. Second is hotspots. So the EIA rule tells that around five by five kilometer around the region, you can consider to have some intervention. So based on that, we thought five by five is good. So I'm showing you only two results, uh, two specific hotspots in Delhi to drive drive what I'm trying to explain now. One is citywide intervention, second is hotspot specific intervention. So Jahangir Puri is, is an hotspot in Delhi. So we did some interventions. We reduced heavy duty vehicles, heavy duty plus unpaved, reduced the car emissions, reduced MSW emissions, reduced unpaved emissions. And you see the best possible reduction was around 15 to 20%. Now, if you do the same thing throughout the city, the best possible reduction is almost 40%. So what does it mean in Jangir Puri? To reduce concentration in Jangir Puri, you have to reduce emissions throughout the city. Is it uniform? This is what we generally do. We reduce emissions. We make an action plan for the entire city. Let's look at Anand Vihar. Anand Vihar shows that both hotspot specific and citywide interventions have very, very similar results. So what, what does it conclude? It concludes that don't make an action plan for the entire city, make hotspot specific action plan. The reason is maybe in one hotspot, industries could be dominant, but there could be a hotspot in Surat where industries are no longer dominant. So if you have a pie chart for Surat and it tells, okay, 40% industries don't get, don't, don't be misled with it. There could, it is, does not show the picture of the entire city. There could be locations in the city where there could be some other sources which are dominant. Right? So now we are more confused. How do we make a clean air action plan? So when we make a clean air action plan, generally, we should first understand what should be the objective of the action plan. Objective is to reduce the pollutant of interest, right? And make feasible uh, action plans, right? So how should be the action plan be formulated? So what is the methodology that you formulate, use? Then and who all should be involved? This is the most crucial step. For example, when we develop emission inventories for Punjab, what we did was we have a meeting with all the stakeholders, industries, traffic commissioner, municipality commissioner, everyone. And then we take data from them. We make them as a stakeholder because they we take data from them and then we give, they own the action plan, right? So when you come up with an action plan, we should include everyone who is responsible for air quality in the city to be part of it. So, and how do you visualize? Visualization is always very important. You should visualize it very well. So how do you evaluate? How to evaluate the performance of action plan? You cannot just make an action plan and forget. You when we should see whether it's implemented and also how successful is it. So answers to everything lie in something called decision support system. That's what Professor Kare was basically mentioning. So what's a decision support system? It has multiple steps where there is a decision support tool. It has identification of feasible interventions with involvement of stakeholders. For example, if the action plan wants to reduce industrial emission by 50%, so the, the head of industrial organization should be called and requested and they should, they should be discussed, okay, we are planning 
that 50 percent emissions should come down then the industrial association would tell sorry sir we cannot come into 50 percent maybe 25 percent is what we can do then that should be incorporated in the action plan that's when it becomes feasible anything which is not feasible should, will never be reflected on the field right then we uh, implement it and then the study the interventions and once they are implemented there should be an organization which monitors it and again some analysis should be done about how impactful it is right so the decision support tool is the main part of it which is where the actual science lie <clears throat> which has multiple components like physical chemical and uh, engineering component where we have an emission inventory we use a good uh, regional or urban air quality model then we have a, a engineering component where interventions are driven and we come up with more and more interventions and everything would be automated such that if you want to tell i'll show you animation which will be more clear for example if this is the area and uh, your simulations are ready and then you tell okay please identify hotspots then it will identify two hotspots it's an animation don't take it uh, like super scale or something then you pick up one hotspot and then it will forecast air quality for next three days and then it will also tell what is the contribution of different sources for next three days then you do artificial intelligence based to come up with interventions so for example if you have to uh, if you can select okay these all sources have to reduce by this much then what how will the concentrations change or if you want to reduce the concentrations by certain percent then what should be done everything should be done right so so overall so why such interventions or why such things are needed in surat because you should so this is what i i keep hearing from many people that we have we have resources we need to know how to control air quality so you should have a decision theater where multiple people sit in the same room and take a decision how to improve air quality in the city there should be a theater or a room where you have the data for where your perusal and then you can take a call which is better right so for for example one example how does it work like if if a question comes up like how do urban transport and manufacturing affect air quality then the decision theater should involve transportation sector and manufacturing sector like ministry of roads and ministry of heavy industries and maybe fight delhi is, is what who are running the program then the organization like CPCB and GPCB should be there and it is about air then they all would discuss and the simulations would tell okay transport if you reduce manufacturing for example then the heavy duty vehicles transport will reduce also by certain percent and together what would be the improvement in air quality so such so there should be interlinking of different units it's not like ministry of roadways will work separately and then they, they make they do not make roads which are good enough for the heavy duty vehicles transport right so it should not work like this so people should work together so with this i will end my talk thank you thank you sir for your valuable thoughts now uh, let us call upon the last speaker to speak for uh, Mr. Divyam Shah, who will be speaking on Save Soil, which is a global movement launched by Sadhguru. Mr. Divyam Shah.
We are talking about Hello. 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 Uh, good evening, everyone present here. So I am Divyam Shah, and uh, I have been a student of architecture and involved in the field of archi architecture for three years. And I have been uh, working as a volunteer with the uh, Isha Foundation. And I have my uh, fellow volunteers, uh, Arvind Savani and Anil Zamzera. So we are here to talk about uh, this movement called Save Soil. So this movement is the world's biggest ecological movement, which has been undertaken by Isha Foundation. And, uh, and it is under the banner of Conscious Planet. So, uh, so when we are talking about ecological crisis, so a lot of people are unaware of the fact that uh, uh, that uh, soil is a cornerstone aspect when we are talking about ecological crisis. So why save soil? So, so soil actually is a vital element when we are talking about ecology because it is a, it is a cornerstone aspect of all the cycles which uh, help uh, maintaining balance in our ecology so so recently what we are facing right now is a uh, soil extinction within an within uh, next couple of decades and and the thing is that this only way we can address this issue is by is through having policy change on a global level and that's why uh, we need to uh, that's why this movement has been undertaken so that we can amass support from 3.5 to 4 billion people and uh, drive policy change across all democratic nations and uh, so by addressing this issue we can address a lot of uh, actually ecological issues and the issues we are facing about nutrition, food shortages, biodiversity, and because this uh, event is uh, uh, about um, air quality, so when we are talking about climate change, so if the world's soils are not revitalized, they could release 850 billion tons of uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere due to global warming. And if we, uh, if we work on uh, regenerating our soils, it can be uh, uh, the biggest carbon sequester. And through green cover, we can, solve uh, we can solve a major part of our climate issue uh, within the next couple of decades. So it is very important that we address this issue because this is the cornerstone problem. And through this, we can solve many of the issues when we are talking about even water scarcity because, uh, because actually in most of subtropical regions, soil acts like a dam because with rich soil, it can hold 800% more water than all of the rivers combined. And, when, and even our nutritional, uh, nutrition has been very much depleted because after the industrial revolution, what happened is that most of our agriculture practice have become similar to our industrial. It's like a more like a factory and we are throwing chemicals and we have cut down trees and we don't keep our soil under green cover. And that is why this is, uh, this has actually, uh, manifested a lot of our ecological crisis because more than 50% of the habitable human land is under agriculture practice. So when we are talking about ecological crisis, it is very essential that we talk about how we address our soil and 
our agriculture practices so this moment was started uh, by isha foundation as i told you so it was started uh, as a he has taken a 100 day journey from london on 21st march and he is coming to uh, to kaveri basin a 30000 km journey so to and he is addressing all different major cities and uh, major uh, influential people and this movement has been uh, supported by united nation world food program uncd and a lot of responsible ecological scientists all have come together because this is very vital and if we don't address this issue now it is going to be a big problem for us in the coming future so without taking much further time of yours i want to show you this video we are talking about climate change carbon emissions and global warming and various other aspects but we are not addressing soil soil is the habitat upon which zillions of life thrive once there is no richness in soil then you have forsaken the planet in many ways every responsible scientist in the world and the un agencies are clearly saying we have only 80 to 100 harvests left that means approximately 45 to 50 years of agricultural soil left on the planet by 2045 we will be producing 40% less food than what we are producing right now and our populations will be 9.3 billion people the food shortages that could manifest in the next 25 years the consequences of that is unimaginable civil wars will unfold across the world once there is food shortage what we are facing now is soil extinction why is soil becoming extinct where is it going away what is happening to our soil we must understand if you add organic content to sand sand will turn into soil if you remove all organic content from the soil soil will become sand in normal agricultural soil the minimum organic content should be between 3 to 6% the most minimum is 3% at least this minimum to keep the soil alive to keep the soil as living soil is a must agricultural soils across the world the depletion is so heavy in most countries more than 50% of the top soil is already gone in the last 100 years the nutrient levels have dropped significantly the level of micronutrients you would get from your food in early 20th century to what you are getting from the same food now has dropped 90% if you ate one orange in 1920s what you got from it now in 2020 if you have to get the same you will have to eat eight oranges this is what we have done to our food Soil is the biggest ecosystem on the planet and so few people know anything about it. One teaspoon of healthy soil probably contains more microbes than there are people on earth. The microbial life in the first 12 to 15 inches of top soil is the basis of our existence. It is this magic beneath our feet which has produced the life that we are. this first 12 to 15 inches of soil is the basis of life for 87% of life on this planet including you and me we have to begin to recognize that what we call our soil mother earth is a living organism open soils ripped open by plowing open to sunlight is the basis of destruction of microbial life so the focus should be on agriculture the focus should be on seeing that land is under shade as much as possible some kind of shade grasses herbs bushes trees conscious planet is launching save soil movement to bring about a policy change to regenerate soil as a part of this <laughs> i am 65 and i am riding 30000 kilometers a lone motorcycle journey 30000 kilometers across 24 nations 
to activate support from the citizenry to assure the governments long-term investments will be appreciated. So it's extremely important that soil regeneration is enshrined in the policy of every government on the planet. We must change the narrative on the planet that soil is a wealth, a legacy we have received from previous generations and we have to pass it on as living soil for future generations. We are in a cusp of time, if you do the right things now, in the next fifteen to twenty-five years, we can significantly turn this situation around and regenerate the soil. But if we allow this to progress like this for another thirty to forty years, after forty years if we attempt this, then it could take hundred and fifty to two hundred years because that much loss of biodiversity would have happened. From twenty-first of March for one hundred days, the whole world, every human being on the planet should talk soil. We must hear the word soil, save soil everywhere to see that the narrative on the planet changes towards the most vital aspect of our life, the soil. Each one of you should reach as many people as you can to make this happen. Many global leaders and influencers are already participating in the movement. Be a part of this and let us make it happen. From my part, uh, as much as I can contribute. We're going to save the soil. Do your part. And saving the soils. Our future, our children's future, and our planet's future depend on it. Save the soil. We know what we must do, so let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make, Let's it, make it happen. happen. Let's, Let's make it happen. happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. So, let's make it happen, yeah, so it is, this is a very important issue and the, see the thing is that in uh, democratic nations, our voice is the power and when we are facing something, such a problem which is a, on a global level, we doing a little bit here and there, it cannot really address the issue, right? So, the only way we can address this issue is through policy change. And this needs people's support across the globe. So, you know, that is why we have this uh, conscious, under conscious planet, save so hashtag save soil. And the, if you want more information about this, you want to join the movement, volunteer, help in any way, the website is savesoil.org. So you can check that out. And yes, thank you. So I would like to thank SGCCI, President Ashish Bhai Gujarati and all the office bearers for giving us this opportunity to spread awareness about this movement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Priyam Shah. Uh, for sharing such a beautiful video by Sadhguru. Uh, now I request Group Chairman Shri Badresha to give the vote of thanks. Nobody is on the dais. <laughs> uh, so dignitary is off the dais. <laughs> Uh, very specially, uh, President uh, Ashish Gujarati, who has just left for the another uh, seminar on first floor that is a part of a textile week. So he remained present. That was a fine, wonderful. Uh, very specially, thank to a lady from uh, uh, Singapore, uh, Professor Yu Liai. She has given us a good thought. Uh, uh, regarding this uh, seminar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mukesh Khare. You have given a wonderful presentation as well as uh, a nice light on the, or a thrown light on the subject. We are very much thankful. I am a little bit uh, uh, 
uh, when we have not our authority is not here with us uh, i am sorry really that uh, but we will give the uh, recording of this uh, session to them to implement on your uh, suggestions uh, mr kora and last but not least uh, uh, mr divyangsha who has given a very good presentation on a sayo the soil thank you thank you ganesh i thank to uh, chairman of this i am a group chairman of the this committee but the chairman who is really uh, key person to hold this seminar mr kunhal sa and his son uh, doctor uh, uh, umang sa umang sa sorry uh, so uh, last but least and thankful to all whoever has directly or indirectly uh, helped us to hold this seminar definitely we will give the suggestions we will give the recordings of this uh, uh, minute uh, this uh, meeting to the authorities and thank you thank you anish and let us uh, join for the team